We continue in our Truth to You studies in Psalm 31. And we come to the uh, statements that are given here after he says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. This is a, a, a great summary statement of trust. Lord, I have no place else to go but to you. And now if we come to this section, we, we go into the woe and the distress that David was experiencing and the depth of it. He says, I've hated those who regard useless idols. And sometimes when we see this, it mixes us a bit because we wonder, what does he mean by this? Because Jesus said for us to love our enemies. But David is talking about the uh, practice that is happening. This terrible um, regarding of useless idols. But I trust in the Lord. He says, no, I can't go there. I have nothing to do with it. I hate it. I want nothing to do with that direction. I want to be one who trusts in the Lord, who walks with God. And uh, it's useless, useless to look anywhere else. But I trust in the Lord. Same statement at the very beginning. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. Now he speaks here, of gladness and rejoicing. But then we get the picture of what's actually happening in his life. And I don't know how much gladness or rejoicing you would have if you had what he experienced. He said, for you've considered my trouble, you know my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of my enemy. You set my feet in a wide place. So, Here's David being hemmed in by his enemies. Here he is being surrounded in every way. Here he is being hated and abused and accused. And yet at the same time, he says, you've set me in a wide place. You see, my friends, the outward circumstances of life are not all there is to life. There is the place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Even in the midst of the worst of circumstances, you can find a place of quiet rest. You've not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You've set my feet in a wide place. Um, it's, you've put me in a large room. So, on the one hand, I seem like I'm boxed in. On the other hand, I'm free and free indeed. That has been the experience of even those who have been incarcerated for their faith in Jesus Christ. That they have discovered freedom in the midst of this, a cell. They've discovered what it is to know God and to love him and to serve him. And that the boundaries are limitless when our eyes are upon the Lord. Oh friend, are you completely bound by the circumstances of life, then this is a word for you. And sometimes it may be bound by sickness. It may be bound so that there's nothing you can really do. And some that are, are experiencing you know, trials that it's hard to imagine. And yet God is still there and God is still real and God is still good. A couple of years ago, I, uh, I had three shots, vaccine shots, and I am not anti-vaccine by any means, to travel to Togo, Africa. And two days later, I woke up with extreme pain, screaming pain. I landed in the hospital. Um, I was... I, I, w I was on Dilaudid for hydromorphine and fairly strong dose for almost a month and a half of the worst pain and agony and oh it was just barely manageable even with the drugs 
and yet the Lord was present with me. I was not bound because of this. It did not defeat me nor destroy me, but rather it drove me to prayer. It drove me to walk with God. It caused me to turn to Him in deeper ways. And so He does not shut us up into the hand of our enemy. He sets our feet in a wide place. Outwardly, people would look, could look and say, Look, why would you even bother? Like Job, whose wife said to him, Why don't you curse God and die because you've been so afflicted, we've lost everything. And Job said, Even if he slays me, I will trust in him. There is a large place, even in the midst of suffering and sorrow and trial and rejection. You can find that place, but you can only find it in the Lord. You have set me in a large place. For here's what David says about his condition. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. I'm in trouble. My eyes waste away with grief. Yet, yes, my soul and my body. So, Lord, I am grieved. I am in trouble. My life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. So we're not talking about a short-term situation, but long-term. My strength fails because of my iniquity. My own sin is enough, he says. And my bones waste away. I am a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors. Hmm. And I'm repulsive to my acquaintances. So my enemies my neighbors, and my family. Those who see me outside flee from me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I hear the slander of many fears on every side while they take counsel together against me. They scheme to take my life. What a summary. You know, sometimes we like to pass over verses such as this because they're pretty gloomy. But don't forget what David wrote, you've set me in a large place. In spite of all of these things, Lord, you're still good. In spite of every circumstance, you're still faithful. And my hope is in you, Lord. My trust is in you. Don't let me be ashamed, O oh God. Deliver me in your righteousness. David cries out to God in a dark place. My friends, when I read this passage of scripture, I think of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who was filled with grief, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Yes, his soul and body, and spent with grief, Strengthening fails because not of his iniquity, but our iniquity upon him. His bones wasting away, a reproach among his enemies and neighbors. But especially my neighbors, he says. And those who see me outside flee from me. And repulsive even to my acquaintances. Even his own brothers didn't believe in him. Jesus has been there and done that. Again, we have a savior who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But in spite of all of this, you still set me in a large place. I'm forgotten like a dead man or a mind, like a broken vessel. Slander of many, fear on every side, they take counsel together against me. They scheme to take away my life. David is going through the deep, dark valley. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, went through the deep, dark valley. And maybe you're going through a deep, dark valley yourself. But God can still put you in a large place. He can bless you in the midst of the depth of oppression that comes against you. These things do not need to prosper against you. Look to the Lord. 
Maybe you've been diagnosed with a terrible disease. You still have a large place to go to, and it is in Christ. There is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. And in the midst of the deepest trial, God can meet you there and bless you and touch you and do things in your heart and life that can only be done by God. And so we, we ought not to sugarcoat Christianity. We ought not to sugarcoat what it is to walk with God. We must face the reality and be honest with people that at times the walk with God is difficult and at times it's very lonely and at times we will go through deep, deep valleys. Now we'll go through them anyway, even if we're not a believer. But we can go through them with joy. We can still go through them with confidence in God. And we can find a place where we can say, I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy because you have considered my trouble and you've known my soul in adversity and you have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You set my feet in a wide place. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you do, Lord, in the midst of whatever it is that we go through in life, whether it's mourning, losing a loved one, whether it's false accusations such as David experienced here, whether it's the betrayal of friends, the betrayal of family, whatever it is, whatever it is, find the place to put your trust in God. For as for me, verse 14, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. So deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Do not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Let lying lips be put to silence. We speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Lord, bring justice in this situation. Bring vindication. I trust in you to do it all, O oh God. As for me, I trust in you. You see, the first verse of Psalm 31 is a real summary of the whole psalm. It is, Our Lord, in you I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. We can see this being written out in detail now. We can see uh, the psalmist David going through the deep trial and knowing, still, as for me, I put my trust in you, O Lord. My times are in your hand. Lord, you're sovereign. You're in control. God, you've not gotten off the throne. You know, my friends, when you're going through deep trial, God is filled with mercy and love and compassion for you. And he wants to be with you in the trial. And eventually he'll deliver you from the trial. Whatever it is you're going through, this too shall pass. It will pass because everything here is temporary. The worst of circumstances will someday be over. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, in the rejection that he experienced, in him being forsaken even by his friends, and being nailed to that cross and all of the darkness of it. It tells us in the book of Hebrews, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despising the shame. For the joy that was set before him, he knew that this would pass. He knew that even that great forsaking of the father upon the son, because of him bearing our sin, taking the wrath of God upon himself, that this too shall pass. Praise God that in Christ, all trials, all sufferings, all sorrows have an end. 
all the way to heaven itself for we hear that declaration there'll be no tears no sore no crying and there shall be any more pain for the former things have passed away so whatever it is my friend whatever depth of sorrow whatever depth of mourning or trial or 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 persecution whatever it is that you could go through the darkest of valleys if you are Christ, you will come out the other side. It will pass. I will trust in you. You've put me in a large place, O oh Lord. And my friend, we can discover what it is, to, that large place, a wide place. You can discover what it is to be in a place of victory in the midst of the trial and not just when the trial is over. Let us learn to trust God. Let us learn to cast ourselves upon him and find him to be the faithful God that he is. And so David keeps on praying. He keeps on persisting before the Lord, saying to him, As for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. I affirm this, O Lord. My times are in your hand. Lord, you are sovereign and everything about me. So deliver me from the hand of my enemies and those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Oh, cry out to Jesus. Look to him. Trust in him. He constantly keeps on praying and looking to God. And he discovers he discovers these things in the midst of this dark place. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you've laid up for those who fear you. How great is your goodness. What about that goodness? You've laid up for those who fear, for you, who fear you. You've laid it up. You have it in store. The goodness of God is stored up for you. If you are God's, if you belong to him, if you've trusted in him, you will not be ashamed. You will not be disappointed. You will be delivered. He's laid up his goodness for you. He stored it up. Which you have prepared for those who trust in you, even in the presence of the sons of men. It is present goodness too. It is not just future goodness. It's not just when you get to heaven. There is the goodness of God to know and to experience even now. You will hide them in the secret place of your presence and from the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Lord, you will win today. Oh, to have that confidence in God. It's one thing to have confidence in God when everything's going well. We all is well there's not a problem not a cloud in the sky oh how we can praise him how we can say thank you lord for all the blessings but when the trials come when the dark days roll in when sickness or disease or false accusation whatever the circumstances are even death itself can I praise him then? Can I find him faithful then? Can I say you are my God? Can I know with confidence that you have goodness prepared for me and that you set my feet in a wide place? Oh, friends, this is what God offers to his own. Now, I want you to know these promises are not for everybody in the world because Things will not be better by and by if you don't have Jesus. Things will be worse. And all of the trials and struggles of life will not bear fruit to goodness of the Lord being poured out upon you. But eternal suffering and sorrow will be yours if you do not trust in God. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you will miss the great deliverance of God. Instead, you will experience 
Yes, the rejection of others, because everybody does to some extent. And then the very rejection of God. And my friend, it's not because God doesn't care. It's not because he's not willing to save. It's because you're not willing to come. Come to Jesus. Come to the Lord. Listen to what he says here. Blessed be the Lord. Victory. Notes of victory. For he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I'm cut off from before your eyes. And there are times when we feel like it's hopeless, it's useless. I can't go on. Lord, where are you in this? I feel like I'm cut off from you, O oh God. I felt that way sometimes. But it hasn't stopped God from being faithful. It hasn't stopped him from bringing me through. Because listen to what it says. He says, I said in my haste, I hurriedly said, I am cut off from before your eyes. There's an honesty here, friends. Sometimes we go through such trial that we feel like I'm done for. The Lord has abandoned me. I'm cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, thank God for that. You heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. You didn't forget my prayers, Lord. You haven't forgotten me, and I'm not cut off. I said it in my haste, but it's not true. It's not true. What does God do? He puts you in a wide place. So I want to encourage you today to discover the faithfulness of God in the darkest of hours to understand that those dark hours do not hinder God from watching over you, from being the good shepherd, from taking care of you, and that he will bring deliverance. That I can say, into your hands I commit my spirit. That I can say, oh my God, I trust in you. And that even when I lose my ability to trust him in the moment, he still remains faithful. For I said in my haste, I'm cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications. You've heard my prayers. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you've laid up for those who fear you. It's true, friends. Cling to the truth. Rest in his unchanging love. And so David concludes with this. In the midst of all of this depth of struggle and trial, he says, O oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. So my word to you today, my friends, is be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. What a wonderful concluding verse as we've walked down a deep, dark path with David. He has revealed to us, the Spirit of God reveals to us the faithfulness of God and to know that this too shall pass, so be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. All who hope in the Lord. Do you hope in the Lord, in the Lord? Is your hope there? Now, if your hope is only in the temporal things of this world, then how devastated you will be when you lose that hope. But if your hope is in the Lord, you can't lose the hope you have in God. Because the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful even if we're not. Even if we get discouraged and downtrodden in the moment, it does not stop the hand of God. Even if we say, I'm cut off from before your eyes, it doesn't change the truth of it that we're not. Not if we are the Lord's. So, my friend, we have light in the darkness. We have hope in the places of despair. We have peace in the midst of strife. We have Christ 
who says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Yes, Psalm 31 is a psalm of sorrow, of trial, of suffering, betrayal, rejection, but it's a psalm of hope, a psalm of blessing, and concludes with the challenge that comes from one who has gone through deep trials. O love the Lord, all you his saints. Thank you, Lord. Thank you today for your deep, rich, and abiding love. Thank you, God, for what you have accomplished. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we talk about committing our into God's hands, our spirit, we ought to do that every day of our lives, not just at the end. And uh, here's a song that I wrote, and Grace and I sang it at the Savoy Theater many years ago. Grace was still a teenager at the time. And it's a song called I Surrender. And it's about just that, surrendering our hand, into his hands, our lives. We should surrender everything to him. And uh, because we can't do anything for him, we need him to do everything for us. So let me encourage you to surrender. We're going to sing one more song for you. It's called I Surrender. When you become a Christian, you realize that it's not your works or your religion or your, what you do that saves you. It's Jesus who died on the cross for your sins. That's what becoming a Christian means. It means you put all your hope and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else, no other foundation will do. Not my good works, the Bible says, not by works that we're saved. We do good works because we are, but not to be saved. But then once we become, if you become a born-again Christian, or you trust your, give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever terms you use, then we think, oh, okay, now from now on we've got to work hard for God. Instead of realizing it's God's life and power that wants to work through us, he wants us to trust him for living the Christian life as well as becoming a Christian in the first place. He wants us to trust him for everything. He wants us to surrender everything. This song is called I Surrender. You stare, I'll just... Child, are you stronger than me? Child, you are not able. Will you leave everything to me? Leave it to me. For I walked up Calvary's mountain. I paid the price for your sin. I died. Then I rose again, and I've come to live within. Child, let me live for you. Child, surrender to me. For without me you can do nothing, but in me there's victory. Victory. I 
Maybe fresh surrenders was needed in your life. Maybe surrender for the first time. But you can come to Jesus Christ and discover a, a God who's willing to take you and change your life and cause you. So just join with us in that little chorus, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. To you. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender to you. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender to you. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender.